Question of the month. Hashtag respect. And it's only the ninth, but could it get any better? All about buying a new Land Rover Defender and, of course, what this might say about you. I'm John Cadogan from autoexpert.com.au and I get new cars cheap for buyers here in Australia. Hit me up on the website for that, won't you? Here's a remarkably self-aware question from a viewer such as you on the cusp of dark side seduction. You know what I mean and he knows it's wrong, but he wants it bad anyway. Kind of like my position on Tiffany at the damn office. Quick question, if I may. Am I a fuckwit for considering the new Land Rover Defender? I don't do a lot of kilometres and am wondering whether the five-year warranty will mitigate the risk of owning one. Thanks and regards. I ask you, vis-a-vis the human condition, is it not impossibly perverse that one can use a word conversationally frequently, although probably not during a job interview or when talking to the Pope or something, at least not on the first date. And one can do this for many years indeed without knowing precisely what that word actually means. Look me in the eye. With a glock at your head, would you be able to pen a solid definition of this most versatile general purpose profanity? Fuckwit, noun, vulgar slang, a stupid or contemptible person often used as a general term of abuse. That's quite disappointing. Now that I know, I would frankly rather not. What a wonder bra insult. When one unpacks it, it seems somehow less substantial than one had anticipated. You stupid, contemptible person. Like, is that all you got, dude? So, essentially, Ross is asking if he's a stupid, contemptible person for considering buying a new Land Rover Defender, to which I would retort, nah, dude, we all want things that are bad for us, and we want them all the time. That burger, those fries, that, uh, let's call it, um, intimate encounter with Sofia Vergara and Michelle Rodriguez, things of that nature, yeah, whatever. I guess the defining characteristic vis-a-vis -vis stupid contemptibility is whether we act on these powerful impulses or not. To me, Ross's question is pretty much like offering an alcoholic a drink. See, forgive me, Father, for I have sinned and it's time for a confession on this. I have been that Land Rover tragic. I have actually owned a Defender 110 for about five years, so it was hardly a one-time thing. That was in the mid-1990s. Frankly, it was not unlike my current relationship with my dominatrix. I loved to hate that Defender, and I friggin' hated to love it. I think I hated to love it more, you know? The turning circle was... Let's just say, having two to three cracks at switchback turns was not all that uncommon. And the cabin was incredibly wide, and yet the minuscule front seats, they were really Lilliput spec. They were jammed hard up against the windows. So you sat there like that, with the wheel offset way over there towards the passenger side on the left. It was most undignified. And you could not actually reach the handbrake without putting your face right where the airbag module would have been, you know, had the vehicle been fitted with such an high-tech miracle in the manner of, I don't know, every other car on sale at that time, sort of thing. And let's not forget, there was no sound insulation for the rear wheel arches, memorably. So any time the rear tyres picked up any fragment larger than a grain of sand, it sounded not unlike a Taliban sniper had engaged your current position. And still, I don't know why, but I loved that Defender. If I had to search for logical justification, which I'm sure had nothing to do with it, it was a weapon off-road, right out of the box. And I drove heaps of Defenders as a journo, right? 110s, 90s, 130 crew cab pickups. One 110 in particular in essentially bottomless mud at East Norcastle in the United Kingdom. 
and they were all friggin' awesome. That was a great experience because we don't get that much chance to drive in that really soft, sucky mud. Different techniques required there. Did a lot of taking off in third gear, low range, which was interesting. It's pretty clear, therefore, through the prism of retrospectivity here, that I can't authentically call Ross a fuckwit on this without also being a somewhat stupid and contemptible person myself. My deep shame here, getting to the bottom of this confession, is that I have loved every Range Rover I have ever driven. And baby, there's been dozens. You weren't the first. And Discovery has always impressed the shit out of me. Also, with its frankly amazing breadth of capability. But I've been sober now for many years and therefore the chance of a relapse is minimal. I'm stronger now, you know? The new Defender is certainly not the old one. That's pretty obvious. It's lost that whole hose-out utilitarian thing. Ergonomics and safely, safety, like vastly improved. Could they be any worse? Obviously. But when you drill down into the specs, it remains obvious that this thing is still a proper off-road weapon. The angles, right? The weighting depth, 900 millimeters for a standard vehicle. Hashtag respect. The terrain response system. <laughs> yes. That is an awesome concept. The execution in a parallel universe. There's obviously a Defender designed by Land Rover geniuses, but are indeed and sold by Toyota. And that is obviously heresy here, but over there, in parallel world, it's the perfect off-road tourer. It just is. Allegedly, with the new Defender, you can put 168 kilos on the roof. FFS. And it's a monocoque too. Goodbye, body on frame and all of that on-road handling lack of finesse. There's like 900 kilos of payload, which rivals a ute, let's not forget, and an 85-litre fuel tank. So this thing is a potentially compelling touring proposition. Also, in the minus column, it's bloody expensive. Like, if you want to throw $170,000 on a Defender in Australia in 2021, then... Hey, step right up, dude. Got the vehicle just for you. The range topping three litre turbo petrol straight six. I think they call it the P400X. It's about $148,000 drive away, bog standard. But if you'd like to add a special something, then hey, sit right down, tick these boxes. You might want to throw in third row seating, $3,400. That's nothing. A front jump seat. I want that. 1,900. The cold climate pack. Hey, we're in Australia, but why not? 1,500 bucks. Orange painted recovery points. Yes. 800 bucks. <laughs> Satin protective film for the whole car. Yes. Six and a half grand tow pack with eye cover, whatever that is. Two and a half grand. Three zone climate air. Yes. 2,400 bucks. Solar shield, windscreen, and privacy glass together, 1400 bucks. That's nothing. Roof rails, 900 bucks, and I'd suggest they couldn't even throw them in, the cheap pricks. And maybe you want to go the full pimp, and who doesn't on a vehicle such as this, and add those 22-inch alloy wheels. That's just $3,600. They're going to be shit off-road, of course, and good luck getting a replacement 22-inch tyre in... Dingo Piss Creek, you know, out there. If you add that all up, we just hypothetically spent 25,000 bucks in options on a vehicle that was already at the top of the friggin' range. What sort of a game is that? And, ladies and gentlemen, there's your basic 170,000 smacker Land Rover Defender. And a complimentary divorce from reality. They throw that in, free, if you tick every box. It's literally the least they could do. Now, let's put that in perspective, okay? 170 grand, well, 
That's a fully loaded 200 series Land Cruiser Sahara, and no need now to tow an acoustically transparent aluminium shit -war from this busted ass salt pan over here to the next one just down there for the view. No need to do that because you've got 35 grand left over now to spend on four and five star accommodation, inclusive of rooms with a water closet more than two feet from the dining table. Imagine that. Yes. A caravaner could not conceive of such luxury. You caravaners and your three and a half ton porter potties. Yes, live in the dream. Just saying. So, Defender is kind of big vehicle too. Like it's just over an inch longer than that 200 series, meaning it's about 10 centimetres shorter than a Kia Carnival, but 21 centimetres taller than the Carnival. It's actually about an inch taller than the Cruiser, and it craps all over the Cruiser's approach and departure angles, frankly, and it offers 200 millimetres greater wading depth. That's kind of significant. Three and a half tonne tow capacity on the Defender as well, but only 150 kilos on the tow ball, and frankly, that's a joke. They're suggesting that you can tow three and a half tons and carry 900 kilos of payload, of which 168 could go on the roof. It's like insane, properly insane, as in a bad idea. Worst one ever, if you ask me. To me, new Defender is absolutely nothing like the old Defender, okay? Except perhaps in turning circle terms, which remains fairly shit. They've recycled the badge pretty clearly to get more people across the line on the showroom floor, basically Defender Tragics. But New Defender is actually what Discovery used to be, at least that's how it seems to me. And Discovery today is what Range Rover was, frankly, and Range Rover today is what Maybach would be if Land Rover had a brand like that, specifically devoted to even richer, more enthusiastic wankers. Kind of like Daimler does. My reservations are, you're in the Kimberley, right? Living the dream. And then some little widget breaks off. Down there. Unfortunately, the kind of critical sensor it was attached to needs replacing. And to do that, you need a new sensor and a couple of Phillips head screws and obviously you have to plug it in, but inconveniently. You also need a Land Rover dude carrying a Land Rover dude's Land Rover laptop. To initialize said new sensor so that you don't have to drive, I don't know, the entire length of the Gibb River Road in limp mode. Because trust me, having driven it a few times, that would get old, personal opinion. So let's just say you're somewhere near Broome and this kind of thing occurs. The nearest Land Rover dealers are either in Geraldton or Darwin, and they're both roughly 1,800 kilometres away. Good luck with that. Could be a bit of a wait, couldn't it? Which is, of course, why the Outback is so profoundly dominated by Toyota. They're not as good off-road, they're not as sexy, at least to some people, nor are they better at touring or as plush in many respects, but they are a lot more reliable and a shit ton better supported out there. So there's that. And of course, if you have a serious Land Rover problem, either in the bush or in the burbs, Land Rover Australia has a fairly solid track record of acting properly Satan in a suit about resolving it. Google the words Sally Morphy, M-O-R-P-H-Y Morphy, for a really good example of Land Rover Australia, going both above and beyond Olympic gold medal winning lengths back in 2018 to avoid meeting its consumer law obligations over Ms Morphy's shitbox Range Rover. And when you do that, make sure you read both the initial court ruling and also the costs ruling, because they're both entertaining. Thankfully, the court ultimately brought Land Rover to heel over this, and it cost them a bomb, but it was such a fight. There's also 
a most entertaining judgment in the Queensland Civil and Administrative Tribunal called ACH Computing versus Brisbane City Land Rover, in which Brisbane City Land Rover lost the matter, thankfully, and had to refund $65,000 to the beleaguered punter out there over their shitbox Range Rover Evoque, and this was back in 2019. They're both fairly recent history, I put it to you. As renowned social philosopher Alice Cooper so famously said in Feed My Frankenstein, yes, I ain't evil. I'm just good looking. Certainly more fitting for Land Rover, it seems to me, than just above and beyond. Now, as to Ross's point about this five-year warranty and his low Ks and whether this mitigates the risk, dude, the risk is poor reliability, worse support, and abject willful corporate malignancy. So I really fail to see how any warranty or low vehicle usage on your part can hope to ameliorate any of that. I so wish brands like Land Rover and Jeep could just get their shit together on reliability and support because there's so much otherwise to love about the product, right? I could even live with the poor reliability if the support were first rate, but it's really not. And the facts matter. In fact, they really matter. And therefore, to answer Ross's question finally, fuckwittery is a medical condition. It's actually two distinct medical conditions and possibly three. We'll get to the third one in a minute, but type one fuckwittery affects essentially all young men aged from the ages of 15 to 24. There's no escape. Antibodies typically build up after the age of 24, and the condition resolves itself serendipitously and spontaneously over the next five years or so, incrementally. However, and this is most worrying, in a significant number of cases, and opinion is divided over whether this is genetic and or a product of the environment, the condition becomes chronic and sufferers develop full-blown type 2 fuckwittery, for which there is sadly no known cure. The defining characteristic of TTFW, as it's known in the game, is the inability to second guess yourself. It's like Dunning-Kruger, right? TTFW sufferers cannot ask themselves, what if I'm wrong? If you have the presence of mind to launch yourself on a journey of internal inquiry to ask yourself, would this course of action actually make me a fuckwit? then it's almost certain you are not one. So no, Ross, thinking about buying a new Defender does not make you a fuckwit. Buying it is insufficient even to make you a proper fuckwit. So conclusion, you're not a fuckwit, mate. I don't actually know if this is going to disappoint Ross or make him happy. Like, was he hoping to dodge the TTFW bullet and be kind of okay with that? Or was he hoping to be loud and proud like... I am not letting my condition get in the way. We'll never know, will we? I might reach out to him and find out. Most people don't know this, okay, but Australia leads the world in TTFW diagnoses per capita. Retardistan obviously has more absolute cases, but we are ahead per capita. Yes. Hashtag national pride, but do what you can to make Australia less shit. Ask yourself, what if this course of action makes me a fuckwit and maybe make some adjustments? I know this will be difficult for some. For more information on this, visit my other website, ttfwexpert.com.au. Do I own that one? I'm not really sure. Uh, now that I think about it, it could be Arbors and Tony. They might have that one. I don't know. It's a possibility. Unfortunately, non-fuckwits and even ex-fuckwits make fuckwit-like decisions, and they make them all the time. We make them all the time. In medicine, this is known as an hysterical fuckwittery attack. An HFA. Not funny. Which can be either chronic or acute, really. HFA. I would humbly suggest that hysterical fuckwittery is what defender ownership really is, when you drill right down into it. Please be kind to me in the comments, because... Frankly, I'm still getting over my own bittersweet, hysterical, fuckwittery, personal experience.